Hello there guys, welcome back to Unistalks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. This is video number one of two. It is a double upload day and why? Because it is expected that later today we will be getting the official announcement of Enzo Maresca to Chelsea. That's not been done yet, but it looks like we do have something else that's happened which is a big talking point in the football world this morning because wherever this man goes, it's a massive talking point, right? So we're going to discuss it. And that is none other than Jose Mourinho, who has had an agreement with Fenerbahce. I'm not surprised. I said this uh, videos ago where we were talking about who was going to walk into the Chelsea job. And a couple of times I mentioned, yeah, Mourinho is looking like he's on his way to Turkey. He's on his way to Fenerbahce. It's happened. There we are. It's now basically over the line and it's about to be announced. We might get the announcement today, but because we've had big journalists come out with the news and all the latest and whatnot, we're going to dive right in because we know it's a matter of hours before it's officially announced and it's going to happen. Mourinho is heading out to Fenerbahce. Now, Let's get into what all the latest is and then we will dive in to see what I've got to say on it. Here it is. Jose Mourinho has reached an agreement with Fenerbahce for a two-year contract. That's from Di Marzio, someone that we've not really referenced for a long time on this channel. Anyway, more from Fabrizio. Fenerbahce are closing in on the agreement to appoint Jose Mourinho as new head coach. Mourinho has already said yes. Verbal agreement in place and contract now being reviewed by Mourinho's camp. The announcement can take place today as revealed by and um, goes on to say Ebola, which um, I'm guessing I think is some Spanish um, outlet. But Fabrizio clarifies more. Jose Mourinho's verbal agreement with Fenerbahce is on two-year contract valid until June 2026. It will also include an option for a further season. Jorge Mendes has been negotiating the deal and now time to review, sign all formal documents. Here we go soon. So Jose is on his way to Fenerbahce. Now, this is going to be formalised. Why now and why so quickly? Because everyone is in London. The Champions League final takes place tomorrow. Jose is in London for that. He will be a pundit on TNT Sports, so we're going to hear from him, um, you know, properly. I think he's going to be alongside Owen Hargreaves, uh, Peter Crouch, if I'm not mistaken, and whoever's hosting. But... He's on TNT Sports for the Champions League final as a studio pundit, and I'm sure he's going to explain everything tomorrow. So that's that. But he's in London, so are Fenerbahce. So are the officials that he's got to deal everything with. And everything's getting signed in London, and everything is getting done in London. So hence why this is now heading over the line, because it's looking like all will be done whilst everybody is in London for the Champions League final. Um, so... That's what's going to happen. Now, they apparently, according to Turkish media, is one clause in this contract. What is it? Here it is. So Jose Mourinho will have a clause in his Fenerbahce contract whereby he will be free to leave if the Portugal national team come in for him. That's from NTV Sport, massive Turkish sports um, broadcaster. So, that's the latest. Now... Mourinho to Fenerbahce. Most people on this channel know how I feel about Jose, right? Best manager Chelsea have ever had, done wonderful things with us, I'm forever grateful. I think he's a legend, right? Simple as that, absolute ledge. Is this a good move for him? People, I think there's going to be a split camp here. I think there's going to be people that are going to look at this and laugh and go, ah, oh, he's gone to Turkey. What? Without actually... I think understanding why, and I'm going to get to that, because yeah, on paper, you think Mourinho is going to Turkey, or you think he'd go to Spain, or he'd go to Italy, or he'd come to England, or wherever. No, nah, he's going to Turkey. Yeah, on paper, it looks a little weird, right? But I'm about to explain why I think this is actually a very good move for him. Now, I don't think that. Mourinho is, quote-unquote, finished. 
as much as I don't think he actually cares about reputation at this point because he's done everything that he's wanted to achieve in the game. If you go back and you actually look at what he said when he joined Chelsea the first time, he said his aim was to conquer England, conquer Spain, conquer Italy after having already conquered Portugal. No manager's done that. He's done it. He's done it. He went from Chelsea over to Inter Milan after conquering England, conquered Italy. After that, he went to Real Madrid, conquered Spain. Mission accomplished. His career goal was accomplished. Then he came back to Chelsea <laughs> and he started doing the rounds. So I think in terms of his reputation, I feel like he's already achieved what he's wanted to achieve in the game. The one thing that's left is Portugal. But we already know he's not going to go for that just yet. Maybe he's now considering if they were to come in for him, that's why he's got the clause in the contract. He's probably reaching that age where he's starting to think about it. But I truly don't see Jose going to Portugal until he reaches maybe close to 70 years old. He's only just turned 60. So I still think he's got time in the game. But people are going to laugh at the fact that he's gone to Turkey. He could have gone to Saudi for all the money. You see, this is also a proof. He's not here just for the money. He's loaded. He's minted. He's already made all of his money, right? I genuinely think he just loves the game. He just wants to work. Simple as that. He wants to be at work, right? I think he can't stay away from football. Hence why I don't think he's going to go to Portugal yet. But hence why I think he's also happy to go for jobs that other managers, I think, could be afraid of going to. It's funny because people criticise managers, including ones like Pep and Jose when Jose was at the top. Kind of, because he'd already done it at Porto and that was one hell of an accomplishment. But they criticise managers and go, ah, oh, these managers, they wouldn't ever dream of going to a smaller team and proving themselves there. They're only there for the big clubs because that's only what they can do, right? They can only function when they got money around them, right? So what did someone like Ancelotti decide to go and do? He went to Everton, right? What did Mourinho go and do? Well, now... He went to United when they weren't really high up, but that's still Man United, so mm, we'll, we'll put that to the side. He went to Tottenham. That speaks volumes. He went to Roma. These are teams with low budgets, yeah? So, clearly, he just wants to work. <laughs> Ancelotti went to Everton, went back to Real Madrid, look at him now, killing it. Pep is probably a manager we will never know as to whether he can go to a smaller team and do it there. We'll never know, because the man operates on the upper hemisphere at all times. He's only there, never plummets. <laughs> and he just keeps winning and winning and winning. Fair play to him, right? But there's one thing here as to why I think this isn't about just Jose wanting to go to a lower level, right? The Tottenham, maybe. Roma, absolutely. But Fenerbahce, if anything, when you look at things for what they are, I think this could even be an upgrade on his time at Tottenham. Definitely his time at Roma. I think Fenerbahce is um, an upgrade on Roma. I'll explain why. Jose has a chance now to revive himself and to revive Fenerbahce in the process. At the same time, he doesn't need to try and get the team to go and make Champions League football or try and make a certain position in the league or he's already got that established. He needs to focus on turning this team into winners. At Tottenham, it wasn't trying to get them to turn into winners straight away. That was, mate, it's Tottenham. When do Tottenham win? You know, it was a chance. The aim was to try and get Tottenham into the top four, competing, try and get to a final. And he did. And what happened? They sacked him before a final. So that's Tottenham's fault. Roma, well, he got them a conference league. And then the, try, the, the step up was to let's see how to do in the Europa League. Let's try and get into a Champions League spot. It was never a case of let's go and win Serie A. Or with Tottenham, let's go and win the Premier League. It wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. But with Fenerbahce, no, 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 no. With Fenerbahce, the aim is win the Turkish League, win the Turkish Cup, and go as far as you can in the Champions League. They're already in the Champions League. 
qualifying rounds, might I add. Now, this is where it gets interesting for Fenerbahce because when you look at Fenerbahce and their, and their placements, their historical placements, it's actually crazy. The last time they qualified for the main stage of the Champions League, right, the group stage, like the, 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 the last 32, or now it's going to be the last 36, of the Champions League was in 2009. It's crazy. Fenerbahce normally either win the Turkish League or they finish second. They always have to go through the qualifying rounds of the Champions League and they always seem to struggle. Now Mourinho's job will be to get them to into the Champions League for the first time in 15 years. That will already be an accomplishment for them, right? At the same time, his job is to win the Turkish League. There's no hanging about. They just missed out on the Turkish league after getting 99 points in their, in their league campaign and they lost it because Galatasaray won on the final day. Fenerbahce and Galatasaray are like this. It's a war between those two, right? It's an actual war. Now, this leads me on to the point why I think this is perfect for Jose. Jose gets accused of being outdated. He's a dinosaur. His methods don't work anymore. He's too hard on players. The players nowadays need a cuddle. The players nowadays need to be treated soft because they're more sensitive than they used to be, right? The players now are not men. They're boys that need nurturing. Am I right? Yeah, guess what? In Turkey, that doesn't exist, brother. That doesn't exist. <laughs> Let me tell you now, that's not the case. In Turkey, men only only and this is why i think jose is going to feel relieved and he's going to thrive in this environment because you can't change someone for who they truly are and Mourinho is let's face it and this is part of the part of the reason why i would have loved him back at chelsea and i'm also going to explain why this is a good move for chelsea by the way hold that thought it's because i i'm not personally yeah I think it's wrong to go down this route of sensitivity and cuddles and participation awards and don't worry, we're going to go again. And I'm just, that, that, as far as I'm concerned, diamonds are made under pressure. Simple as that. You need to feel pain. You have to put in the work, you have to put in the mileage, you have to go through what it takes to get to the top and I just feel like there's one way for that to happen to its best right now we live in a society now where that's not the case anymore <laughs> and I don't know why but in England in Spain I would dare say in Italy to an extent right that is now the way and Jose's way doesn't really function anymore like it used to because some players can't take it. In Turkey, nah. In Turkey, you walk into a war zone. <laughs> In Turkey, if you can't keep up, step aside. Don't stay in the way because you'll get taken out. That's the Turkish mentality. The Turkish mentality are men have to be men. And that's Jose. He's going to feel at home here. He's going to thrive in that environment. And he gets the freedom to do his way, the old way, in the dressing room because the club and the federation and the supporters and everyone will approve of it because that's the way it's done over there. They still hold on to the old school way. This is why I think for Jose, perfect. And on top of that, he gets a chance to get some more silverware. Get Fenerbahce to win the Turkish League. Um, and when was the last time they won the Turkish League? The last time they won the Turkish League, I think, was 10 years ago. 13, 14. Um, I've looked at their cups and they got to the quarterfinal of the Conference League last season, or the season that's just gone by, and they got eliminated. The Europa League, the season before that, round of 16. Um, and every time they get to a Champions League qualifier, they get knocked out. They lose it. This is Jose's chance to try and get Fenerbahce their league title for the first time in 10 years. 
try and get them to win a, a cup. I think the last time they won a cup wasn't actually too long ago. I think it was maybe a few years, like four or five years ago. Um, and also, if I scroll down, actually, I've got it here. Uh, oh, no, 22-23. So two seasons ago, not this past season, the one before. They won the Turkish Cup. And the, the time before that, 2013. So they've won one trophy in the past decade. Like, that's not good enough. For Fenerbahce, that's not good enough. Galatasaray are sweeping everything. And Fenerbahce want to end it. And they came this close in the league campaign that just gone by to the point where they got 99 points. They still finished second and the supporters were going crazy in the streets rioting. This is what Mourinho's walking into, guys. The supporters were out on the streets whacking lampposts and going crazy on the roads. That is the norm in Turkey. That's standard. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mourinho is going to thrive in this environment, right? Where men are men. Now, I'm not saying go out and cause controversy on the streets. Don't. But the mentality, you've got to be strong. And that's Mourinho's fabric. It's too harsh in England now. It's too harsh in, in Spain. It's too harsh even in Italy to an extent now. It's too harsh in our modern Western society. In Turkey, no, no, no. It still operates at 100%. So Mourinho at Fenerbahce, I think, is a good chance for him to revive himself. I think it's a good chance for Fenerbahce to be revived and to knock Galatasaray off of their pedestal. And for Chelsea, this is a good thing. Why? Just yesterday, we were talking about a certain player and how... We are not going to try and utilise him to go and get Victor Osman, for example. But we are still trying to get this player to be sold for the release clause of £38 million. Now, who is this player? This guy, Romelu Lukaku. Well, guess what? Fenerbahce have been linked with Lukaku. And now Mourinho's there. He just worked with him at Roma. Could Mourinho be the guy to take Lukaku? off of Chelsea's hands and free us up a little bit I would say so seeing as Napoli with Conte might not actually be moving for him or they've not shown any indication Fenerbahce are linked with Lukaku right they're linked with Thomas Partey they're linked with um, they're also linked with someone else they've, they've been linked with Jorginho but they're not going to take Jorginho and Partey at the same time um, funnily enough, they've even been linked with Benzema. Now, Benzema's trying to leave Saudi, I think. Um, so this could be a good move for him. But Mourinho walks into this job with respect, with the certainty that whoever the president is, because they've got elections coming up, that he will be there and he will have a say and he will be, you know, given the green lights for, who the, for the players that he needs. He will have a budget as well, a good budget because Fenerbahce now have a budget. And he's on the brink of already getting to, to, to Champions League football, something that he didn't even have when he was at Tottenham or when he was at Roma. So this could be a very good job for Jose Mourinho in an environment that he's going to thrive in. I wish him the best. I'll be following Fenerbahce along. I've got one of my best mates who is Turkish and he is a Fenerbahce fan. So um, I'm going to see how it's all going to go down with him. That's going to be fun. Um, but, and he's definitely going to be watching this. So shout out, brother. <laughs> um, and, oh yeah, good luck to Jose. And let's see what happens. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And as I've said, hopefully he can snipe Lukaku off of our hands and that would just make things 10 times better. So let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Don't forget later on, there is going to be expected announcement for Maresca to Chelsea so I will give you my thoughts on opinions when that is all unveiled and announced and we get it officialized from the club it's expected to be today it's not certain but it's expected so let's see what happens but video number two will be out later on so make sure you're here for it hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded check out the socials on screen and in the description and I will catch all of you later on have a good one people in a bit take care and peace